that none of the models on the lab bench show you. So number 20 on here, number 20 says it's the musculus platysma. So it's number 20, so it's a very, very thin, flat, superficial muscle. Curves over the mandible, comes out, it's, it's, it runs down the, the front of the neck here. So it's, notice here you see the posterior margin of it, right there where, where I'm running my thumbnail. That's the rear edge of it, right there. So this flat, thin surface muscle is the right platysma muscle there. Okay, so uh, this is the only model we have that actually shows it. The chart shows the left one. Platysma, see number 20, we have musculus platysma, okay? P-L-A-T-Y-S-M-A. -A. Now, for this one, two things. Uh, first of all, the diaphragm, this uh, sheet-like skeletal muscle uh, that the, uh, the lungs attaches, specifically the parietal uh, pleura, will attach to the diaphragm all the way across here. So it plays a big role in its relaxed state, it's curved like so, it's contracted state, it contracts downward, pulls down the lungs, helping to expand them. The other big players in lung expansion are the external intercostal muscles. Intercostal meaning between the ribs. So uh, here we have got the serratus anterior, we pointed out earlier, uh, but you can see the ribs there, 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 there. See the muscle in between? There, in between, in between, in between. Intercostals, so the external intercostals. Same deal over here. See the ribs, the muscle in between. The left side, external intercostal muscles. So between them, the external intercostals and the diaphragm play the main role in, uh, in expanding and, uh, and deflating the lungs. When they contract, we get lung expansion. When they relax, we get uh, lung deflation. Air is forced out of the lungs at that point. Okay? So that's, that's all I'm going to, these are the additional things that these models show you that the four on the lab bench don't show you. So our last stop on our tour is the chart. Let's head to the chart. Yeah, no Join us. Go over the uh, chart. So we have anterior view, posterior view, and uh, some of the muscles are very nicely done. Some not so much. We'll be skipping some of them because they, I think the artists did a poor job. But uh, mentioning that the half head on the on the back counter shows a right platysma. Uh, the chart shows a left platysma. Again, this very superficial, thin. Flat muscle. Platysma actually means flat muscle, right there, or flat. So musculus platysma would be the flat muscle right there. So we're seeing the left platysma. The right one, which is on that half head on the counter, has been removed. So you can see deep to the platysma, we've got the sternocleidomastoid, the left one. The removing the right platysma reveals the entire right sternocleidomastoid muscle. So these two, again, are flexor muscles. When they contract flexion, we decrease the angle of the head relative to the trunk. Nodding, in other words. Uh, here, uh, we have the anterior belly of the right digastric, going all the way, so that's number 13, so go all the way back to 13A, that would be the posterior belly of the right digastric. Here we have the right masseter, and peaking horizontally and from underneath it is the right buccinator, orbicularis oris, right orbicularis oculi, left orbicularis oculi, the eye closing muscles. Unlike the levator palpebri, attached to the superior palpebra, which are the eye opening muscles that we dealt with two weeks ago. Uh, let's see, left and right pectoralis major. So you get the left deltoid shown here, a bit of the right deltoid toid shown here. Uh, left biceps brachii, we can see uh, tricep brachii, but we don't see it broken down neatly in the head, so I can't really assign that here. Uh, the left latissimus dorsi, serratus anterior, and external oblique, or obliquus externus. Uh, let's see. So uh, here we have the right external oblique, and we see a bit of the right serratus anterior. We have an aponeurosis, a flat tendon sheet, covering the two rectus abdominis muscles, so you can see the outline of the left and of the right 
right this abdominis, and the thicker part of the tendon runs right down the midline through the umbilicus, and that's that linea alba that's, that's on your list. Let's see, uh, let's see, bicep brachii, tricep brachii, I'll come over to here, to the right arm and forearm, so bicep brachii, uh, see tricep brachii, can't really see brachialis until we get over to there, uh, that would be the right brachioradialis, and the extensor digitorum is on the other side, the forearm. Uh, right sartorius there, and gracilis there. Left sartorius and gracilis here. Uh, right vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, rectus femoris. We're gonna see the left vastus medialis and rectus femoris. We don't see the vastus lateralis because of the rotation of the of the left thigh. Uh, let's see, we, so we do have uh, the left tensor fascia ilati, which joins to the iliotibial band there. Here's the right uh, tensor fascia ilati shown, forming a muscle tendon junction with the right iliotibial band there in white. Let's see, moving on down to the gastrocnemius, you can see the medial head, a bit of the lateral head. Tibialis anterior, right tibialis anterior. There is exposed uh, tibia, your shin, there. Uh, medial head of the left gastrocnemius. There we see the uh, medial surface of the left soleus. And then we've got the left calcaneal tendon or Achilles tendon. Uh, the left uh, tibialis anterior. Pus, let's see, that should do it for this view. And you know, anything of, of, that's definitely discernible. Uh, all right, on to the posterior view, epicranial aponeurosis. And we see the occipitalis portion of the epicranius, with the occipitalis portion of the occipitofrontalis muscle group. Uh, let's see, the left sternocleidomastoid, right sternocleidomastoid. Uh, let's see, left deltoid, right deltoid, left biceps, brachii, tricep brachii, brachialis. Brachioradialis running across here, and the extensor digitorum. Right, they're going straight to the mainly the three uh, most, um, um, more medial digits, uh, digits uh, two, three, and four. Let's see again. So right triceps brachii. Don't really see the heads clearly at all. Brachialis. It's just a hint. The biceps brachii there. Uh, so we have the brachioradialis and extensor digitorum. Not contracted because the digits are not extended. Here it is contracted because the digits are extended. The action known as extension, like so. Uh, let's see. So left trapezius, right trapezius, left latissimus dorsi, right latissimus dorsi. We get into the infraspinatus, teres minor and major, but they did a really poor job of showing them on here, so don't worry about them, at least as far as the chart's concerned. Left and right gluteus maximus, left and right gluteus medius, left iliotibial band, tensor fascia ilati shown there, uh, and the right side iliotibial band, and can't really see the tensor fascia ilati on this one. Uh, posterior left thigh, hamstrings, we have the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and there, and there, so the number 48 pointing to here and to there, that's the left semimembranosus. So it's deep to the semitendinosus, but it's broader, so it extends beyond it both medially, and actually both laterally and medially. Uh, lateral head, medial head of the left gastrocnemius, calcaneal or Achilles tendon, soleus there. Uh, let's see, the hamstrings on the right thigh, not so great, not as clear. Uh, so medial and lateral head of the uh, right gastrocnemius, calcaneal or Achilles tendon, soleus there and there. That should do it. Any questions? Hope that helped.